Hi everybody, this is Property with Leonard and welcome to another episode. Now on this channel, we discuss property, finance and investments. Now please note that none of my videos constitutes as financial advice, but if you're looking for financial advice, please speak to an accredited and registered financial advisor. Now purchasing a property is a major investment that should be considered carefully. On the surface, a home could be beautiful, but there might be underlying issues that if overlooked by you as the buyer, could cost you a lot to repair. Now I know, I mean, I've been in a property business for many, many moons, and I know when people get to me and when they find and see the house, because I mean, the whole aura changes, the whole outlook changes. In that space, in that frame of mind, you are so excited and overwhelmed. I mean, you've been waiting perhaps all your life for this moment. That's why you, you are subscribed to my channel, because this is what this channel is all about. I help you to make informed decisions so that you don't get into a position that you overlook things that will cost you a lot of money in the long run. Now, although sellers are required to provide you as a buyer with a list of defects of which they are aware of, this should form part of the offer to purchase. It is best to cover all bases. You know why it's also so important? I mean, I don't have to tell you this, but let me just mention it. You are the one that will pay off the bond for 20 to 30 years, not the agent and not the seller. So you must make sure that, that you are fully aware of everything in the house, that you are making a good financial decision. You must make sure that you cover all your bases and make sure that you ask the right questions before going ahead and importantly, before signing the offer to purchase. And just on that point, not so long ago, I did an episode where I discussed things that you need to consider uh, before signing the offer to purchase. I'll leave a link to that episode in the description below, or you can just click on the banner on top. It'll take you to that episode. Um, now, often you've heard that you somebody say you're buying the house as is, meaning you're buying it footstools. Now, what the footstools clause basically is, is that it's a provision in the agreement which stipulates that the purchaser buys the property from the seller as it stands and thereby indemnifying the seller against claims for damages in respect of any defects on the property, whether these defects are patent or latent. The food stewards clause um, largely protects the seller by stating that the buyer needs to prove that the information about the defects was deliberately withheld from them um, at the time of, of viewing the house and obviously signing the offer to purchase as well. Now, this one can be very tricky. So to protect yourself, you as the buyer, you need to ask as many questions as possible. And also another point just here, even if you need to go view the house more than once, once again, you are the one that's going to pay it off in 20, 30 years. And even if you buy it cash, it doesn't really matter. It's your money, it's your investment. Make sure that you are comfortable or as comfortable as you can be. Now, these include things such as, I mean, talking about the footstool clause, I don't want to jump around here. These include uh, things such as whether there has been any disputes of, of uh, on boundary issues with neighbors or whether any sort of pest problems exist with snakes and mice and bats and bed bugs and cockroaches and ants being the most common issues. <laughs> I know you, you must be thinking, what am I talking about? Because you, you haven't even thought about it. But once again, that's why you watch, watch my, my, my videos and you subscribe to my channel. And I would advise you to subscribe. Apart from this, buyers also need to look out for structural and other damages or defects that could end up costing you as the buyer a, a substantial amount to fix. Now, I recorded, like I mentioned, um, a lot of episodes in the past that, that covers a lot of the things that... Uh, in addition to what I will be sharing with you today, I'll leave a link to my playlist, a complete playlist that you can just binge watch. And I'm sure, uh, I, I, not I'm sure, I, I guarantee you, you'll learn a lot from it. I'll leave a link uh, in the description below. Once again, you can just click on the pop-up banner. It'll take you to those uh, to the, to my playlist, which will definitely help you. So the first defect to look out for or, or check when buying a home is check the roof. Now look out for any old, broken, or missing tiles on the roof that needs to be replaced or rust patches on a metal roof. Many a times and you know, I, um, I, would, I would sell a property to a buyer and you know the process takes about six to eight weeks but now with COVID sometimes it varies. It's not easy to really just pinpoint time. It never really is because it's always a give and take. That's why we say as close as possible to. 
Nevertheless, the point that I'm trying to make here, often I would I would sell a house to a, to a, to, to a client and just before it registers, you know, sometimes people want to renovate and they want to just make it nice and personalize the home. They would, they would maybe perhaps want to paint the roof and they would say, phone me and say, Leonard, or ask me what, what type of roof does the house have? Is it the tiled roof? Is it the corrugated roof? Because, you know, when they buy a property, they, you are so excited. And if you haven't been there yet, trust me when you get there, you are so excited. You overlook the obvious things. And I mean, you are forgiven for that. And that's why you need to actually, when you do these things, make notes. Even as you watch the video, if you plan, if you have potential or a first time buyer or buyer to be, or even a second, third, fourth time, I mean, perhaps you were just lucky that you didn't buy a problem yet, Because, but it can happen. Make notes so that you, you know what you're letting yourself into. Because a damaged uh, or leaked roof will cause issues inside the home, which could be costly to fix. And not to mention the cost of fixing or even replacing the roof. And trust me, you don't want to go down that avenue. In my experience, also a flat roof tends to give more problems than a pitched roof. They are more prone to leaking and from a practical point of view, simple things, something as simple as installing new light fittings, they are quite challenging because of the actual amount of space between the roof, the ceiling and the roof. Um, it goes without saying, but I'm just mentioning that to you. I'm recording, um, my recording studio is in a section of our house that has a flat roof. So, I mean, I'm well aware of it, but I'm, what I'm sharing with you when it comes to flat roofs, trust me, it is absolutely a fact. Talking about the roof while you edit, number two is a check for rotting wood in the roof, of course, but also doors and wooden window frames and built-in cupboards, especially cupboards close to water, like kitchen cupboards and bathroom cupboards, because if not well maintained, if you don't maintain those wood sections properly, wood that is exposed to moisture, such as in kitchens and bathrooms, will rot over time. That's just a, that's just a fact. So be sure to open up all cabinets before signing the offer to purchase. Now I can I can just hear you say or think that Leonard, what do you mean? I'm walking into strangers' homes. I mean, what is these people going to think if I go in there opening up their cupboards? I mean, I'm looking for problems and for issues. I mean, I'm uncomfortable with this. I just want to add there, remember? I mean, me as an estate agent, I always, um, I always prepare my clients, the seller, to say I'm bringing a, a, a potential buyer to your home. And I mean, sellers are also aware that they come and have a look at the house. Don't feel awkward if you want to open up cupboards to know, and not only to check for any issues or dampness or, or if the wood is rotting, but just to see how many shelves are there, where you can fit in your stuff. I mean, it, it goes without saying, you are, are buying the house. You are gonna pay it off in 20, 30 years. Not me as the agent, neither the seller. So do what's best for you. And just on that point, when it comes to wood, uh, just remember that wood should be painted or treated with a finish that is specifically designed for this purpose. And while you add it, check for dodgy DIY repairs. Now this is the third one on my list. Dodgy repairs are not always easy to spot, but often homeowners who have lived in a home for an extended period will have attempted to make some repairs themselves. It just logic dictates that. Check the plumbing. What you can do as, as the buyer, check the plumbing and the electrical setup, as these are the areas where dodgy DIY repairs are most common. And if you are not sure of anything that seems suspicious, get the opinion of a professional home inspector. I mean, if you are somebody like me, I mean, I'm not a handyman at all. I, I'm not ashamed of it. I need pro, a professional opinion in that regard. And you know, as a buyer, this will be obviously to your account. You will have to pay for it. I'm not sure how much they charge these days. It can be two and a half thousand or five thousand rand just for a professional to come in to inspect the structural integrity and I mean just to inspect the home. To look at things that you most probably won't even think of or will overlook. But even if it costs you ten thousand rand, I would strongly advise that you do it. I mean it will give you peace of mind. It will definitely give you peace of mind. And it will just, I mean, help you to make a calculated decision. And the saving in the long run, it might save you thousands more. You will have a choice to either then, I mean, once you've received this, this report from this professional, you'll have a choice to either just let go and, and cut yourself loose and move on and look for a different property. Or 
if it is the things that you think, you know, you can fix it, it's not going to cost you that much. And I mean, the price that you're buying the property for versus this little bit or this amount that you have to invest in it to get it up to your standard and to your liking. Uh, I mean, it, it balances out. But the point is just if you do this, you would be able to make a calculated and an informed decision. And that is what it's all about. Now, next is drainage and water control. Now, poor drainage systems around the exterior of the home can lead to water and damp problems in low-lying areas around the property. Now, just this is just another one of those points. I mean, you coming to have a look at the house. I have experience of this for almost 18 years. I know people don't really look around. They don't walk around the property. I have to show them around. They never really request to see. I mean, they don't, they don't look at, 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 at gradients of how the water flow because you are excited. And, and you must remember that waterlogged areas could cause penetrating damp as well as compromise the foundation, the structure, if it persists. I mean, just think about this. The foundation, the structure, we're talking lots of money here. So you don't be ignorant because water intrusion can be one of the most destructive and expensive problems. So you must ensure, you as the buyer, ensure that all drainage areas are properly graded and direct water away from the house. Also check that water control elements such as gutters and downsprouts are well maintained. And lastly, check if there's any ventilation issues. Now, adequate ventilation is required to ensure that any moisture in the home can evaporate when water or moisture sits in an area. No, this one goes without saying it's logic, but let me just remind you, when water or moisture sits in an area for an extended time frame, it can cause dampness and mold issues, which pose, I mean mold, pose serious health risks and are often expensive to fix. Now the space between the roof and the ceilings is an aspect that should be paid special attention to, as I mentioned to you earlier, specifically if it's a flat roof, because I mean the space is so limited. There's a small, small amount of space between the ceiling and the roof itself. So ventilation is important because proper ventilation will ensure the longevity of the roof. I think the main takeaway point here is ensure that moisture can escape from the area so that the interior walls and the structural elements stay dry. Evaporation is important and I want you to remember that. Thank you so much everybody for once again joining me on today's episode. If this episode was of value to you, can I kindly ask you if you haven't to please subscribe to my channel, like this video and share it and leave me a comment in the comment section below. I definitely read through all the comments and I do my utmost best to respond to all of them. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next episode. Stay blessed.